Welcome to Neurodiversipedia, where we explain all those big, complicated words pertaining to neurodiversity in ways that everybody can understand. Stop! That was an example of being hypersensitive to sound. You can be hypersensitive to a lot of other things too, like uh, lights. A child with hypersensitivity might walk into a room with really bright lights and and feel really overwhelmed. Hyposensitivity and hypersensitivity are both examples of sensory processing disorders. Kids diagnosed with autism oftentimes have hyposensitivities or hypersensitivities, and it can make processing the world around them really difficult. Therapy, like occupational therapy, even speech therapy for sounds, can really help kids that have either a hyper or a hyposensitivity create an environment that that helps them understand the world. They can practice what it looks like to have empathy toward people who are hypersensitive. Having a hyposensitivity can actually make it difficult to empathize with other people because if someone has a sensitivity to um, spicy foods, for example, and the child who has a hyposensitivity doesn't understand why they can't eat spicy foods, there's a disconnect in relationship. And so you can practice um, having empathy toward people that you don't understand. Working on understanding other kids and people who don't experience the world the same as you can be a great way to practice empathy in social settings. Did that help you understand the term? If yes, give us a thumbs up or subscribe below. If it didn't, then leave us a comment and tell us why. What are we missing? We always want to do better. This is a project by Goalie. Check us out at getgoalie.com.